So did you know that vision has a lot to do with uh, how a Parkinson's person moves? Or did you know how much vision has to do with balance? I'm Joe Rosen, president of Parkinson's Resource Organization, and I'm here again to tell you things to know right now. So if you like the videos that you've seen so far, please feel free to, to um, join our YouTube channel so you can be alerted on the next one. And we've got several lined up to go already, which is really terrific. I am so pleased this morning to be presenting and introducing you to Dr. Eric Ikeda, who I have known since 1997. And I've not only followed his work, he's followed our work. And he has done such extraordinary things for people in our Long Beach area and in our Glendora area. Um, Dr. Ikeda, thank you and welcome to today. Good morning and thank you so much, Joe. It's my pleasure to, to uh, join you today to share some insight on vision and, and how it uh, hopefully will serve your viewers. Terrific. So I just want to tell everyone that this is not a, an ordinary optometrist. And so listen to these letters and words so that when you say, I didn't know this information, you need to find these individuals, someone who has a fellowship in the College of Vision Development. So if behind their name, they have F-C-O-V-D, that would be... Uh, that, that would be one of the types of people that you would look for. Or you're looking for someone who is, has, is a um, neuro-rehabilitative, neuro, neuro opt, opt, neuro-optometric rehabilitative person. So they, and the letters for that are NORA, N-O-R-A. And of course, Dr. Ikeda has all of those. And so, um, we're going to, you keep reading about articles about non-motor um, complications with Parkinson's disease. So generally, sometimes when someone is diagnosed with Parkinson's, they think about tremors, rigidity, and difficulties with gait. Very few neurologists address the issues of vision or vision complications. And yet when we talk about gait um, and uh, so with Dr. Ikeda today, we're going to talk about what are some of the things that vision plays in the role of slowness of movement, stutter stepping or festinating, and particularly balance. Can you address some of those? Well, everything you said, well stated. Uh, absolutely. When people talk of, or think about Parkinson's disease, the first thing that really comes to mind uh, are movement disorders. And so you hear about the bradykinesia, the stutter stepping. And we know those have a profound effect on uh, balance and gait. Uh, certainly when it comes to vision, most people start thinking about just the sensory part component of vision, not realizing there's an, also an essential motor component because our eyes have to direct our actions and everything we do. And so a few things that occur with the Parkinson's patient is uh, the motor er areas that are impacted the most are uh, cicades, uh, cicadic movement, which is necessary for, for reading, uh, pursuit movements as we track or follow targets. It also enables us to uh, uh, in, in engage in our environment. So we see people or may perhaps vehicles crossing uh, and we have to be able to follow them. And the other thing has to do with vergence movements, uh, our eye coordination in other words. And so that enables us to be able to look at targets, uh, to identify them. And certainly uh, with difficulty with these vergence movements, it impacts our ability to gauge depth perception. So when we have difficulty with gait, that could present also from a visual component or factor, uh, our ability to, um, to remain standing and there's an increased fall risk. So that, those are some of the things that we look at. Some other things too, uh, interesting note is, you know, some of the issues that we see in vision are, are dry eyes. Patients have difficulty Perhaps they have uh, uh, involuntary eye movements uh, or cl lid closure. Some some individuals have difficulty even opening their eyes, and so is that coming from is that coming from the medication or is that coming from the disease process? From the disease process, the visual acuity issue is uh, impacted, and the visual acuity has to do with clarity of sight. And so these patients who have difficulty with dry eyes. Uh, that's not properly managed through artificial tears, for instance, uh, or if they're, um, uh, they have difficulty opening their eyes or closing, uh, that's going to uh, impair their ability to see. 
uh, rapid eye movements are impacted. Um, and so there are a number of other things uh, that uh, certainly are affected by the motor system itself. Do hallucinations come along with vision? Absolutely. A very good question because most times what we find is uh, patients in general, uh, they do not like to report hallucinations. And so we always have to be mindful to be able to ask those questions. And for the Parkinson's patients, when they um, report hallucinations, generally those are images that are not really there. They are imaginary images. And so we try to encourage them to share that. And those are things that we try to share with their primary care physicians or their neurologists so they can also modify medications as needed. Uh, frequently, they need coping uh, strategies, meeting with a neuropsychologist to uh, help them deal with that because it becomes very, very, uh, and it affects their mood and, uh, and affect. Yeah, yeah, so there's that. The hallucinations are big, as we know, uh, dealing with this. And another one that we hear quite often, and I know my late husband had it, so we learned some exercises that maybe you can address, but he had uh, double vision. Um, and a lot of time, many people with Parkinson's have double vision, though they don't, they don't speak of it much because I don't know why, but what can you say about double vision? Well, again, that's where, uh, when it, with uh, behavioral optometrists, when they uh, effectively evaluate those, uh, we look at head posture, or perhaps there are some com uh, compensatory strategies they're using. They're turning their head. They may be uh, occasionally trying to close an eye. They may be rubbing an eye because they don't want to report, they not, they're not sure if they are seeing double. But again, those are very easily managed through um, using prisms, prism therapy, for instance, uh, working closely. I know a lot of them are seeing physical therapists and occupational therapists. And this is where sometimes if they are uh, engaged in some therapy, we would help them or we would work with them at our office as well. So a lot of the uh, optometrists are acutely aware of managing patients who have intermittent double vision effectively through PRISM and uh, some strategies they can work on at home. So you use the word, I think, optometric behavior? Uh, be behavior, behavior optometry. Pardon? Yes, behavior optometry has more to do with looking at all the functional activities that as human beings that we engage with, but we, we, ha we also understand how vision plays a role and a lot of the functional activities that we uh, we do in our daily uh, in our daily activities. I am so pleased that we get to do this. We're teaching the world of more of the Parkinson's world in particular, more of the things that about the whole body that are involved in Parkinson's. And vision has been one of my um, my go to places for many 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 years. And I'm so pleased and proud that we have you with us. Are there side effects to medications that we in the Parkinson's world should worry about where that affects vision? Yes. Uh, one of the things that's very important to know is that with uh, Parkinson's in particular, some of the medications could affect uh, the retinal receptors themselves. And so there are a number of patients who can complain about uh, more of a desaturation or difficulty with colors. Uh, contrast could be affected too, because uh, again, the retinal receptors are affected by uh, the medications that are being used. Well, I think there's another one. Is it glaucoma? That um... Yes. Well, there's actually been reported a higher incidence of glaucoma with the Parkinson's uh, population as well. And so glaucoma is one of those ty uh, type of uh, uh, conditions that most people don't realize they have. And the only way you can really determine that is several things. You, you look at the eye pressures themselves. It's usually a disease of eye pressure. Uh, you look at the appearance of the optic nerve, see if there's any uh, changes there, any kind of progression uh, or damage to the nerve head. And also, lastly, what happens is there's a loss of peripheral vision. And so patients may have difficulty with seeing peripherally, but it could, it could certainly be the glaucoma that's affecting them. So also interesting, and I think so much of this is nobody knew about before um, or didn't think about. So I'm so grateful. You're, uh, you know, thank you for being in our wellness village so people know how to get a hold of you. All they'd have to do is to go to the parkinsonsresource.org website, click on wellness village, and go to vision and find, find Dr. Ikeda. Is there anything else you'd like to add today, my dear friend? No, I just... Uh want to encourage everybody to keep in mind how important, how precious vision is, how precious our sight is. And it's very important to understand that even though you don't necessarily feel there's a vision problem, it's, it's important to have that uh, evaluated 
at least at the very least annually and, and finding the doctor who can help tie in any of these deficits to what's happening functionally at home or in the community uh, really will help go a long way improving their outcomes with any other treatments and improving the quality of life. Thank you so much. It's a very specialized optometrist that can do that. You're a very special person. Thank you for being a part of our life. We want to tell the audience we've started our village meetings. And so um, at least once a month, we will have meetings where we have professionals like Dr. Ikeda come on and do a much longer presentation to you and where you can ask your questions and we can get some responses back and forth. Um, so pay attention to your emails, and if you are not getting them, sign up through the website. And uh, Dr. Ikeda, thank you so very, very much for coming, giving your time today. I know we're all hunkered down, but I know you're not. You're an essential business, and I know you've told me about some of the, um, some of the emergencies that you've had to deal with right now. It's amazing. But this is a time when, it, it, yeah, it's just a time for everything and anything, isn't it? That's true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's my pleasure, Jill.